بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين شهر ولا إله إلا الله وأتلا شريك الله وأشهر من محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. We're talking about faith and also along the way what does faith indicate to us about our duty when it comes to social justice. And I wanted to make a distinction here in English language. The difference between truth, liberty, and justice, and another saying which is truth, liberty, for just us. <laughs> to be fair is to deal with the subject of rights. We hear a lot of people talking about rights. But we very seldom hear anybody talk about limits. According to what I was just reading on the internet about the Bill of Rights, at the very bottom of the subject, it said that the Bill of Rights was put into place to set limits on the government. That's kind of unique to think about because most of us, I want to talk about what are my rights as a husband, as a father, as a worker. Also, we hear about women's rights, grandparents' rights, children's rights, animal rights, plants' rights, yeah. But we don't hear much about limits, do we? Reason for that might be because we're just so consumed with what we feel we're entitled to. I use Collins' word, entitlement, I like that. We feel like, you know, I got something that I'm entitled to and I want to cash in on it, okay? But the idea of rights really is to set these limits for all of us. Let me share with you something that we have in the Quran. I, I, I couldn't help but notice how this seemed to fit. See what you think about it. This is chapter 6, Surah Al-An'am, verse 151. It tells us about life being so sacred. Look what it says. God Almighty is instructing us what to say even. He tells us cool, which means say. Come, I will rehearse what Allah has really prohibited you from that you not join anything as an equal with him in worship, meaning God's got the first right. Thou shalt not have any other gods beside God. If you know the Old Testament, that's what I was quoting, chapter 20 of the book of Exodus. And But it goes on here and it says, to also be good and dutiful to your parents. We find that the same thing in the Old Testament, don't we? And then it goes on, don't kill your children out of a plea of want. God provides sustenance for you and for them. This is the verse we use to talk about anti-abortionism. Don't even come close to shameful deeds, whether open or secret. And don't take a life that Allah has made sacred, except by way of justice and law. This is what he commands you, that you could learn wisdom. So the rights that we're talking about in our programs that we're going around saying, Islam, Muslims have rights, etc. I want to remind myself and all of us as Muslims that we're in a country, and maybe arguably one of the only countries that really puts rights in a proper perspective. I'm not saying that Islam doesn't, obviously. What I'm saying is that a lot of the countries that claim to be under Islamic government don't seem to exhibit that very much. I know that Pakistan has a constitution which exactly calls for the following of Quran and Sunnah, but just a piece of paper doesn't always ensure people are going to do what they said they're going to do. The 
the same time, we have people within our own government that are acting very contrary to what our government is supposed to be all about. Our subject needs to be a balance, a middle road, finding where rights and limits come together and being sure that at the same time we want to press for our own rights, but at the same time be sure that we don't go overboard and take the rights of someone else. We're hearing a lot of information in the news about Islam and about terrorism. I just wanted to digress for a moment and explain two things so that we can see whether or not this is a valid comment or not. Terrorism, according to the dictionary, is pretty much when folks have an agenda that they can't be, can't have recognized, they want to get it out there in front of the people so they will do very violent things to get attention for what they want. In other words, they consider themselves oppressed to the extent that they gotta, they're backed in the corner and they gotta get out here and they gotta do something, okay? So they get violent and they do all this crazy stuff and then they wanna promote whatever their agenda might be. And this is not a new thing, it's been going on for <laughs> centuries. But I think we pretty much all know what terrorism is. I don't need to lecture about it. But let's take a look at the word Islam and find out what that's all about. It's the only word in the Quran never translated, even in the best of translations to the English language. I'll give you a couple of examples before I go on. Those of you who know Arabic will recognize right away. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim I seek refuge with the law from the curse of the devil. Inadina in the lahil islam. Wamam yag tabi gairul islam adina fala yuk bala minhum wa huwa fil akhirti min al qasirin. Al yomul akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alikum netmati wa raditu lakum islam adina. So we're hearing this word islam. I, I, I emphasize it so you would catch it in there. It's also associated with another word, though, if you didn't notice this, Islamadina. Deen is translated, but Islam isn't. Deen is translated as the word religion. I assure you, though, that there is reference even wider to that in the Quran itself. Lakum deenakum waliya deen, meaning to you yours and to me mine. And people, and this is for people who don't believe in God or make partners with God. So if they don't believe, they don't have a religion. Let's take his example, somebody who is an atheist or an agnostic who says, I don't have a religion. You could still say to them, lekum dinakum waliyadin, to your, yours and to me mine. And so asking from the scholars of the language, they tell us that this word implies your way of life your complete way of life. So we've got that word, way of life, but what about Islam? The word Islam is a noun, it comes from an Arabic verb, aslama, which comes from the root, sin lam mim. And the words that come out of this, you'd be surprised, this is where the word security comes from, salama. The word security in Arabic comes from this word. Security, very much the opposite of terrorism. Another word that comes out of it is submission, opposite of terrorism. Surrender, <laughs> I don't think I need to explain that one. Sincerity, obedience, and check this out, salam, peace. All of these things have to be present at one time in the word aslama which means obviously you can't translate it with a single word. All of those words have to be there or it's not Islam. So salam, peace, salama, security, but Islam, listen to this. 
Surrender submission, obedience, and sincerity with God. Being in peace with him, no matter what he gives you in your life, best describes the person of Islam. And by the way, you don't take the, the noun and then add er to it in Arabic. You don't do that. It's not an Islam er. You put the prefix mu in front of it and it's Muslim. So a person who is really doing aslama, the verb, following Islam, the noun, who is in surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace with Almighty God, according to the Arabic language, is a Muslim. These are two very opposing, opposite references, yes or no? And even in some cases, an oxymoron. You know what's oxymoron? When you're using opposites in the same sentence, right? Like a really big small guy or government intelligence. Yeah, you got that one, all right. The point that I'm trying to make with this is we have allowed a particular group, for whatever reason, to present something that is ludicrous. And along the way, and I'm going to accept blame for this on behalf of the Muslims, we haven't taken the effort really to educate our own people enough to what Islam is really about. So much so that our youth today know more about Islam from the media, or what they think is Islam, and what they think they're supposed to do, rather than what Islam really teaches. We'll refer back again to the Quran, and you might be surprised. What about dealing with our enemies? What does, what does the Quran tell us? You will be very surprised to find out that the Quran is telling us that until somebody is, is drawing down on you, until somebody is engaging you in an active combat, you're forbidden to take any kind of aggressive position toward them. In fact, if they combat you, then you combat them. But if they stop, then you stop. This is Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 190, and verse 191. And then it said, وَقْتُلُهُمْ And in this case, killing them in mortal combat. But again, if they stop, you have to stop. So we understand clearly that there is a big limit on your right to fight. But what does it take before you even get to that level, Allah tells us in the Quran about tolerance. You'll find this in chapter 7, verse 199. Regarding tolerance, you should resort to pardon, advocate tolerance, and disregard the ignorant. In other words, turn off the Fox network. Who said that? Anyway, to go back toward our enemies. Now this is an open enemy. We're not talking about somebody who just doesn't like Islam or doesn't like you, or doesn't like your head scarf, doesn't like your beard. We're not talking about that. We're talking about somebody who is an open enemy, known to be in combat against you. Look what it says. If the enemy inclines toward peace, then you also incline toward the peace. Trust in Allah, for he is the one that hears and knows all things. Chapter 8, verse 61. Is that clear? But our kids don't know that. I want to wrap this up, really, and tell you something that happened. That's pretty much the end of my speech, anyway. But this really happened in my neighborhood. When I used to live in Virginia, 
Some of the young boys, I say young to anybody under 50 is young to me, but they were university age. We were walking together from our mosque three doors down to where I live, just a short little distance. They live next door and across the street, same area. As we were walking, one of them asked me about the word jihad. And I assumed that they knew about this. That's my fault. And I thought they were joking. And, I, you know, I, I, sometimes I feel like I'm an old person. I'm not, but sometimes I feel like, and I was just like, yeah, come on. Don't talk to me about all of this. Because we have a website called About Jihad. And again, I assumed they had read it. Because these boys were staying in the masjid, the mosque, every night, every night, staying there all night long. We thought they were like really religious good boys. That's what we thought. And I'm traveling all the time. Very seldom am I even in my own neighborhood. And one time, right after Eid al-Adha, I was out on the road and I came back. This is uh, maybe four or five years ago. When I came back, I found the FBI on my porch. And they're asking me, what are you teaching these guys? I'm like, who, what guys? And he points over at the mosque, he said, what are you teaching them over there? I said, I don't teach over there. <laughs> I barely go over there enough for prayers. What's the problem? These same exact boys who were asking me this question, which I wished many times since then that I had stopped right in my tracks and laid it out to them. Had gone around and borrowed money saying they were going to get Eid gifts for friends and so on. Instead they bought tickets to fly to Pakistan. They got off the airplane and they declared jihad. Now those of you who know what I'm talking about, if you're from Pakistan, you'd be laughing right now because it's, it's ridiculous. You, everybody in, in the whole country is a Muslim already. Who are you declaring jihad against? And what do you mean by jihad? And it, so many things come in your mind. They got arrested. They left a tape behind. And this tape indicated that they were really mercenaries now. Self-proclaimed, of course. They were arrested. Went to jail. Their parents flew over there to see what's going on, see what they could do to help. Their own kids stood up in the court in front of a Muslim judge and were saying things like, hang us and we're going to die for God. And you're like, what? What are you talking about? How did you get this mentality? It came out from the video that they left behind and it came out from some of the other boys, the younger kids that were with them. They'd been spending the night there in the mosque, in the masjid, on the internet, going to these websites and going to these uh, areas like Facebook and YouTube, reading and learning and listening to all this garbage and had been indoctrinated with that in the very mosque where they could have been listening to the right meaning. Somebody put something up here that says, uh, Sheikh Yusuf, why do you look so cute on TV? Where did, where did this come from? Which side of the... Uh, well, never mind. We'll find out later. Alhamdulillah. The point that we get out of this is that the responsibility on this subject is really the Muslims. So if you said Muslims are guilty, I have to agree with you immediately. What we're guilty of, though, is ourselves being ignorant and passing the ignorance on while others are giving a scenario that's totally false. And all we're doing is complaining about that, the media, etc. And then only other voice we have besides complaining is apologizing after things go awry. Oh, we well, don't believe that. We're so sorry. Oh, we wish uh, this is not what we stand for. The Islam is not this. Islam is not that. And I've seen more. Maybe you've seen what I've seen. I've seen a lot more about what Islam isn't than I have about what Islam really is. Even the explanation that I gave for the word itself, every Muslim should know that. 
Instead, we hear them, what's Islam? Islam is peace. And we already found out that's not exactly right. So the efforts that are being made here today and now with this organization, I think are a very firm and steady step forward to solve at least some of those problems immediately and definitely all of them over the long term. And this is what we're praying for. This is what we're asking for. Along the way, our media, Guide Us TV, is the only media in America, in English, presenting the real meaning of what Islam is about. So if you want to know how to get it, I want to tell you real quick, there's an app and it is free. Everything we do, there's no ads, there's no commercials on the channel. This is paid for by the owner of the station, my wife. And what we've done and endeavored to do is make it so that you can see it, watch it, learn from it, even respond to it in our live programs by calling in. I'm gonna give you the app so you can do that before I walk off the stage. Just go to your apps, you can do it right now. Just go to your app store, whatever it is, and type in guide us as though it was one word. And you'll see it'll pop up, guide us TV. Download it, check it out. And I hope and pray that Allah really will guide all of us to better. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.